Hey, hey, what's up, gardening friends? Jeff here, Tropical Plant Party. How's everybody doing? I hope you're good. I am great. Hanging out in the growth space. Notice that one of my plants I want to talk about for a long time is looking pretty good. Let's go look at it. Okay, it's looked better, but it's in heavy bloom, which is nice. This is a plant I've wanted to talk about here on this channel for a pretty long time and just had never gotten around to it because I was always waiting for it to have lots and lots of flowers on it. Then I'd forget and miss the opportunity, so I figured pick up the camera, talk about it, not necessarily have to wait for it to look absolutely perfect. That's not how plants work, right? Or just life in general, really. So this is the Brazilian fireworks plant. It's a little bit scraggly. We'll talk about that some more here in just a second. This is a plant that I have loved for many, many, many years. I've had this particular one for a really long time. Despite the scraggly appearance on mine, these actually do make excellent house plants. Let's talk about why. We'll go ahead and start off here with the quick care on these plants. They're pretty simple. They only get about 12 to 15 inches high and wide. They have a nice mounted shape to them. They're excellent for the shade or in the house, a north or eastern facing window would be great for them. Though they can take more light, just not very much direct light. Like most house plants and tropical plants, these do prefer a really nice organically rich soil, something that's going to drain well. I do prefer that, that soil does stay consistently moist, but I have never had any problems with letting the top enter to a soil dry out. They've always been fine. Indoors, outdoors, need to stay really on top of watering. Of course, there's humidity and other things to keep in mind. Though. We'll talk more about watering in a minute. They appreciate being fertilized, I would say at least once a month during their active growing season. And cut back on that in the wintertime if you're not noticing the plants doing the growing. It's just hanging out and chilling. You don't need to worry about fertilizing. You can propagate these fairly easy through seed or cutting, whatever works for you. I don't know about the toxicity of the plants, so just keep it away from curious mouths just to be safe. And they will have a better appearance when pruned appropriately. That's why mine is looking the way it is. It's kind of a scraggly hot mess. I haven't pruned this in a long time. Every time I'm like, okay, it's time to prune this. And then it puts on another set of flowers and then I, I don't want to, but it would really benefit from it. This thing, it's gotten so scraggly. Once it's done with this bloom cycle, I'm going to try and get some seeds out of the plant and give this a good 50% cut back. And I'll also be rooting everything I take from this because these are not the easiest plants to find. They're by no means rare. Not at all, not by a long shot. These are not rare plants. They're just not that easy to find around. And I think that that's largely because this plant has way too many names. For all the various names, you might be able to find information about this plant under. You see all this? It's pretty ridiculous. Brazilian fireworks, maracas, and rose pine cone. Those are the most common of the common names. Everything else is just, it's just a big old mess. And some of these names that you'll find these under are the names of different plants, but for some reason they get all clumped together. In past videos, I have referred to this as I think the pyrophocoma, um, Polyania, something like that. I can't remember. Now it's just to see a Schweid Wheeler eye. Schweid Wheeler, um, here it is. Justicia Schweid Wheeler eye. I really can't help but wonder if this plant having such a big messy situation going on with its naming, if that could be one of the reasons that it's not the easiest thing to find for sale, at least not as of right now. These used to be really super common plants. I got this as an annual. Wasn't unusual to find them either sold with the shade annuals or with house plants. Generally relatively inexpensive, underneath 20 bucks. This was, I think like five or $6, if even. Seed is always an option if you can find seed for these. They're pretty easy to grow from seed. It's worth a try. So I'll have that list down in the description if anybody wants to go through there and try and find them. They could be for sale under any of those names. Who knows what you'll find it under. When you find these for sale, sometimes the silvery veining on their foliage will be really intense. And that's because it's fairly common practice for growers to use growth regulators to help intensify that coloration before sending them out to the nurseries. So if you've had the plant for a few months, you notice that the foliage isn't quite as colorful as it used to be. That's probably what was going on there. You can always try bumping it into some more light or bumping the light up on the plant, I should say that may help with the intensity of the coloration on the foliage. I really don't know. That's just kind of a theory. These really do make absolutely excellent houseplants, though, because they don't need a lot of light. They'll flower intermittently throughout the year. Mine usually have a little bit of a lull during the fall and into early winter where they aren't flowering as often. But then they get going again. And the reason that mine have that little break is because I tend to move them where they have a drastic change on light. These go outdoors during the summer and then indoors during the fall 
fall and winter. It gets kind of dark where I keep this plant during the fall time, so it has a little bit of a transition when it comes to sight. When I've grown these in conditions where they've had nice even light throughout the year and it wasn't fluctuating the way it does when I move the plants in and out, they normally would have flowers on them pretty much the entire year. The flowers, which are the purple parts on here, this is the bract, here are the flowers. They last a really long time and they're absolutely beautiful. So that nice dusty rose color with that beautiful purple florette that pops out from the inside. And if you have them outside, the pollinators absolutely love these flowers. That's true for most justicias, right? Especially hummingbirds, they like to be able to get up in there. Right, here's an example of an older flower bract that's starting to die off. This was several weeks ago, I did a houseplant tour, everything that was out here in the growth space. And I showed this flower when it was younger and looking a lot better. See on this one how the flowers have died off from the top, they're still working their way down the bottom. But on the inside here, can this show on camera? Do you see that kind of, sort of in focus? We've got a whole bunch of new buds that are coming up from the inside of the plant. So when I say that this plant flowers readily and heavily, I, I really mean it. And I haven't done anything special with this either, which I know probably does not come as a shock based on how it looks right now. The thing is, it's just one of those plants where it has been so easy and so low fuss that it's easy to forget to give it some of those extra things, like coming in and amending the soil occasionally, which I do every spring for the palm tree that's above there, and it gets fertilized whenever I fertilize the palm tree, but it really needs pruning. Once this is done flowering, I'll be coming in here and cutting this back by at least 50%. These are nice to have outside, partially just because of the foliage. They have really nice velvety green foliage on them. It stands out very nice in the shade. And then those flowers are a nice pop for the shade too. It's hard sometimes to find things that will flower reliably when things aren't really, really bright. <laughs> Look over here, you see this stem? And that's pretty, that's, that's embarrassing for somebody with a plant channel, but you know, things happen. Not the end of the world, they do respond well to pruning. So once that gets that cut back, it's going to be much more full and bushy and have a nice dome shape to it as opposed to like being all lanky and hanging over the edges of the pot the way it is. While I don't actually mind it hanging over the edge of the pot, I think it looks pretty neat like that. They just have such nice foliage that it would be nice to get that classic mounted appearance that they look best with. It just seems like it's always in flower because it pretty much is. In the fall when it's not in flower, that's not really the appropriate time to do a heavy cut back on the plant. Once the majority of these flowers have spent their way out, It'll get a good prune. There's plenty of information online talking about how these won't flower when you have them inside and temperatures are cooler. That's never been my personal experience with this plant. I mean, my grow space has been in the 50s and 60s the majority of this winter. Things covered in flowers and it is in the most poorly lit area of my grow space too. Just because that's working for me doesn't mean it'll necessarily work for everybody. So if you have one of these and you notice it's not flowering the way you would like it to, generally increasing the fertilizer, and light and or any one of those combinations should do the trick. Even though these are plants that really like shade, they can take some sun. This needs to be filtered through something above it. Too much sun will normally scorch the foliage on these. I've grown these in various situations from pretty deep shade to not quite full sun, but pretty close to it. I can say for me, generally being on the part sun to shade was always better for them. But in the house, it, that's totally different. They can take a really good amount of light, just not too much direct light. They do water differently during the winter time as opposed to the summer. During the summer, these are outside, so that's much more warm. These are plants that do like warmth, so I need to make sure to keep that soil nice and consistently moist for them. During the winter when they're inside and uh, uh, somewhat typical household temperatures, I'll let that top inch, maybe two inches of soil drought in between waterings. They never skip a beat. They're always totally fine with that. Despite being warm growers, they still do quite well in the house. It's just, you know, want to make sure that they're not sopping wet all the time if it's like 65, 70 degrees, something like that. They'll be more prone to rot if they stay wet for too, too long when it's not very warm for them. Normally the leaves are up and a little bit more stiff and erect than these are. This is pretty thirsty right now. We're going through an incredible cold cold snap here in St. Louis, so I'm having trouble keeping the growth space warm. When things drop below a certain level, I don't like to keep things very moist out here at all because then you run the risk of root rot, so they're just kind of trudging along trying to make it through this little arctic blast and they should be fine. A few more days will be warm enough, I'll give them a drink and these leaves will They're always somewhat arch, but they'll start to perk back up a little bit more than this. There just isn't a ton to say about these plants because they're so easy to grow. They don't require anything very special. When I've had these in the home, they grew pretty much flawlessly other than needing to be trimmed back probably once a year or so to keep them nice and bushy. 
That was pretty much it. I just treated them like a normal house plant. They would grow, they would flower. They looked beautiful. That's what I love about them so much. Not just that they're absolutely beautiful. I think that the flowers and the foliage on these is absolutely stunning. They stay small enough to make a nice plant to keep indoors on a windowsill or on a side table in an area that maybe isn't really, really bright where it's harder to keep things going and it flowers. There are plenty of plants that will flower in the house. Very rarely are they as easy to grow and carefree. I shouldn't say carefree, but low maintenance, low fuss plants is the Brazilian fireworks. I should mention, because I know I'll be asked, that not fragrant, at least not that I've ever noticed. I've never noticed any type of scent coming from these flowers. That would be nice though. That would really be the cherry on top for this plant would be if they were fragrant. Oh, that'd be magnificent. Okay, comment down below. Who's growing these? What do you have to add to the conversation? Tips, tricks, suggestions are always appreciated. I'm laughing because I'm looking at this plant. I'm just like, oh, it looks terrible. I mean, it looks beautiful. It's clearly happy, covered in flowers. It's just really, really, really needs to get that trim and get filled back out. It would be nice if it were more bushy. And let's hope everybody's doing well, having a great day and a great life and everything's just going beautifully for you. And of course, as always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye bye.